Michael, people will say you can't just hand wave childhood obesity. They'll say that if there's so much food, that implies a lot more people eating the food and more people, period. And when you have that many people, it's going to destroy the earth. We can't sustain that many people. Thanks, capitalism. You just caused a new problem, overpopulation. At least that was the thesis of Stanford ecologist Paul Ehrlich, who wrote books laying out catastrophic scenarios for the future of mankind and the Earth. Ehrlich thought overpopulation was a major problem because we were using so many resources they were going to suddenly run out, setting us up for a system-wide collapse. Now Julian Simon, who's another economist, thought Ehrlich was 100% wrong to worry about this. In Simon's book, The Ultimate Resource, he points out that more people means more minds. And these are minds which are capable of innovating, minds which are capable of solving problems. So more people isn't a bad thing, it's more of the most productive resource in history, the human mind. And there's a famous bet between these two. So Simon says to Ehrlich, all right, if all these people are draining resources, you pick five metals that you think we're going to run out of, or because we're going to be running out of them, they're going to be prohibitively expensive and prices will shoot up as with anything that becomes scarce. And over the next 10 years, we'll see if those prices go up or go down. If it goes up, they're getting more scarce. If it goes down, they're getting more abundant. And you can pick them. Again, Simon let Ehrlich pick the metals. So Ehrlich went ahead, he picked his five metals, and guess what? The price of every single one of them fell. And he ended up having to write Julian Simon a check. And Simon had that check displayed on his wall until the day he died. And by the way, Michael, it's not like Julian Simon is saying that we're going to discover more of these metals necessarily. It could mean that human innovation either finds a better resource than these or just figures out how to use them more efficiently. We've been through this in the past. In 1920, people were saying, oh, we've only got 20 years left of oil. In 1940, oh, there's only 20 years left of oil. Now, two things are happening. One is they're finding more oil, but they're also developing new ways to make the oil that we do have more effective. If I invent an engine that uses one-tenth the oil to run a car, I have effectively increased the amount of oil in use tenfold. And that is what Julian Simon was referring to when he referred to the human mind as the ultimate resource. Matt Ridley, a famous science writer, puts it this way. Mobile phones have the computing power of room-sized computers of the 1970s. I use mine instead of a camera, radio, torch, compass, map, calendar, watch, CD player, newspaper, and pack of cards. LED light bulbs consume about a quarter as much electricity as incandescent bulbs for the same light. Modern buildings generally contain less steel, and more of it is recycled. Offices are not yet paperless, but they use much less paper. And even in cases when the use of stuff is not falling, it's rising more slowly than expected. So experts in the 1970s forecast how much water the world would consume in the year 2000. In fact, the total usage that year was half as much as predicted, not because there were fewer humans, but because human inventiveness allowed more efficient irrigation for agriculture, the biggest user of water. 